Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to ACEWARE's February User Webinar. Lindsay's with me today, and we're glad to have so many of you in attendance. She'll be presenting the first of a two-part series on crafting quality queries. And I'm certain by the end of today's session, and certainly by the end of the March session, you will all feel a little less queasy about queries. The session's being recorded, so you'll be able to return to the archives on aceware.com as needed for a refresher or to refer your colleagues to. If you have any questions for us during the webinar, type them in the chat box and we can respond or get those shared with Lindsay. So with that, Lindsay, I'm going to turn things over to you and you can walk right. us through the, your first session on queries. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to start with the, uh, the basics of, of crafting quality queries. And yes, throughout this, I have tried to have lots of Q words and, you know, Q and K sounds. So that was very intentional and a bit campy. So um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. What are our first steps with queries? Here's what, well, if I could get this to work, it never, okay, there. What we're gonna talk about today, we're gonna talk about query qualifications. What is a query? What, what makes it a query? What's included? Then we're gonna corner some queries. We're gonna try to, you know, where, where do we go to find one? How do we know what we need? And then we will start on that crafting our quality queries. So do we still have the show of hands feature on here? It's been a little while since I've done the webinar. You sure do, you sure do. All right, so show of hands. How many of you have, uh, let's see, how many of you have edited a query in the past? I'm watching, I'm watching. We'll give them a few seconds here. You've had about 10 of them, about 10. Okay. All right, so some of this will definitely be a uh, will be a review for you, but that kind of gives us a, a baseline on on where we're we're headed. So then, what is a query? What is it? Why why do we have this thing? The 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 one thing to think about: queries are our first step in reporting. In most reporting, in Student Manager, the very first part of that process is a query. So it's a question, it just basic, basic, a query is a question. You are asking some kind of question, which is why we, you know, you're, you're going to report, you're going to get an answer on that question. It begins you know, pretty, pretty broad. You want to cast the biggest net you can, and you can then narrow things down, make it more specific as necessary, and your answers, like I said, become your report. So we're going to ask a question. We're going to try to get it the just the right, you know, Goldilocks fit, not too broad, not too specific, and then we'll have that answer in the form of a report. So when we're talking about questions, right, what, what, are the, what kind of questions are we asking? It's the basic who, what, when, where, why, how, and however you want to look at that. So, you know, we're going to use the query for catalogs, right, for mailing labels, or maybe we want to find out what was popular a few years ago. When did we offer courses? Where do classes meet, right? When we're doing room use reports, we're trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, query on <clears throat> where they meet. Uh, why would we keep an instructor? You can look up performance information on an instructor, right? So this person has had a million courses and people really like that instructor. And how much money do people owe us? That's another really, really key query that we would use and, and one of those reports that hope that you or someone in your office is, is running fairly regularly to keep all that accounting stuff in order. So where do we find them? Let's corner them. How do we get to a query? Most reporting areas, like I said, and to determine your, to determine your reporting area, you want to consider your question. You want to consider what you're trying to find out. So if we use an example of who should receive a catalog, right? All right, so where do I go? Uh, probably we would want to look in our mailing labels, right? So we're going to do a catalog mailing. Who should get this? I don't know. Let's head over to the reporting area and find out. When we get into a reporting area, we have to remember that, that before even running the query, before asking the question, we get some options 
on just the main report screen. One, and something you probably really want to consider if we're looking at this question of, you know, who, who gets the catalog is excluding don't mail names, right? You, you don't have to worry about putting something in your query to exclude because we just, we have this option already. And then things like showing waitlisted or canceled or an active name, you have all of these options as well. So again, you don't have to make that query too terribly specific. This is going to take care of that part for you. Also, one of the questions, right, what was the most popular subject in, in 2018? When we're thinking about course subjects, what's popular, you might want to think about going to the statistics reporting area. I find that this one is a bit underused, so something to keep in your back pocket. This was another example that I just sort of tossed in. We may come back to this report and query once we get through the, uh, the mailing stuff. Are there any questions so far? Doing well so far. All right. So I'm going to back up just a bit. When we get to our report option screen, right, we've thought about excluding don't mail or including waitlisted or canceled, things like that. Once we get all of that set in order, we, were, we, we click OK. And we'll skip that one. And then we get the first, the first official step, right? We've, we've done the pre-step. Now we get to our first step. And we get our query list manager with all kinds of information. And you may find on yours that you have hundreds of queries. You can have an unlimited amount in this place. It doesn't mean you should. We'll talk a bit more about that. But a few things to know. One is the run count. If you're coming into this the first time around, well, I don't really know what I should run. It, you know, what's, what's the most popular? That's probably something that you're, you know, you're running quite often or someone has run quite often. So it's a good place to start. Your query title, very specific. And again, we will talk about how to, to build a specific title. So we know exactly what's happening. Who created it? So you know who to, to go back to and how did, you know, why did you do this or what did you add or explain it to me, right? When it was last ran, again, if you're trying to find a query and it was run five or six years ago, it might not be the thing that you want to use. And of course, the last user, who ran it last? So, hey, Sharon, I see that you ran this last. Did it give you the results you needed? So you, you have folks to ask and, and different context clues to start out to see what might be available for you to run an app. And then in addition to all the query options, we get some buttons over on the right. Pretty straightforward. You, you could select the one you want to run, add a new one, edit one that already exists, copy, rename. There are some in here that are definitely misspelled. So you might want to fix that title or you might find that the query does something entirely different than what the title says. And you can go in and rename it to uh, you know, make it correct. Delete, that's always an option. Remember deletion, Visual Fox Pro, VFP users, it's gonna mark it for deletion. If you're on the SQL Server version, it's going to delete it. So that's a button to use at your own risk. You don't want to inadvertently lose something and quit. That's just going to bail out of the entire procedure. Some fun things you can do is sort by run count or by title. You just click on those column headers. So you know what? I just created one a couple days ago. I'm going to go ahead and sort the run count in you know, ascending order so I can find that rather than having to scroll through. Or maybe I want to look for something alphabetically. Run count query title. The other thing you can do is right click on the screen to filter queries. So again, let's say you have a ton in, in the, the query list manager and, and you're just trying to find one and you know a, a certain part of maybe the title, you know one of the keywords, or maybe you know the field, right? That to, that's included in it. So if you right click, you get this lovely little box that asks, would you like to filter by title or by field? If you know some sort of part of the text, again, you can put that in, or the field. So when I say query field, I'm, I'm talking about the actual field name. 
So, you know, like uh, first name, right, is, is it's in the names table. Think of it as an Excel spreadsheet. Every column has its own heading, right? So that first name has its own field name. And if we're not, not sure of a field name, the best place to go is our help guide where we do have a screen layout. You can click on it, click on any field. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick and switch between things, right? We could look at our name screen. We could hover and get the field name. We could click on it to find out exactly what it does. So remember that is there for you. The other thing, I'm not sure if, if, if you're, you're doing this or not, but when you're, Again, when you're, you're looking for a query and you're not quite sure, you know, it says for, in, in this example, people with interest code, right? That's just the title of it. And I wanna know, well, what does that mean, right? What, what's in there without having to edit? If you just hold your left mouse button down on the title or the run count, you're gonna get at the top right of your screen the, the guts of the query, which is great. Uh, you do have to continue holding your mouse down to read it. As soon as you let go, then that little little bit in the top right is going to disappear. We still good? Any questions yet? You're still good, Lindsay. All right. All right. So again, that will be there at the top right. So location acquired, what comes next? I don't know, but I did have to throw in a very small little Hamilton what comes next. I hope you all appreciate that reference. <laughs> so let's go back to who should receive a catalog. Let's go back to that question. So, so let's think about it. What, what do we want to know? Uh, do we, when we're thinking about who should get a catalog, do we want to send to current students or students within a something year range, right? Within a one year, within a 20 year, you might not want to do that, but some kind of date range. You might want more than just students. You might want people who are in the system, but they haven't even registered for a course yet or you might want a specific age group. So thinking about all of this will, will help you craft that query or, or choose one that's already there. So let's go with just very basics, right? I wanna make sure that my catalog reaches everyone. So what's the best way to do that? I wanna make sure that I get all names, right? Even if they haven't taken a course. And I want to, you know, get, get some activity. I do want to make sure that, that folks are active, right? I, I don't necessarily want to send a catalog to someone who has had no activity in eight years or even someone who, whose name record has been marked inactive, right? And there is an option to deal with those on that report option screen that I mentioned a little earlier. So, names and dates. Where would we start? My recommendation for where to start is to look at just last student activity date is greater than equal to a date, right? So that way you can say in the past, uh, if you're sending catalogs to everyone who's been active in the past five years, right? All you would have to worry about putting in is putting into that query or, or having the query run is just last student activity. And what do I mean by that? There is a field on the name record that shows the last activity. And it's either the begin date of the latest, or I guess I should say most recent course, or the last update to the name record. So with last activity, you're getting people who have taken a course within the last five years, right? Because wh whichever their most recent course is, that date is there. And you're also getting people who, again, may not have taken a course, but something has happened on their name record, right? Maybe they logged in and updated their address or they've added new interest codes or maybe they've contacted you and, and asked questions and, and so you have that on their record. So starting with last activity is a good place. And let's go back over here so I can show you where that last activity is. You will find it at the top right, just to the right of the active box and just above the interest code. So that's, that's what I'm talking about when I say last activity. All right, so what does that mean? Then we're gonna run it. If it's already available in the query list manager, which I'm guessing, hopefully, let's say hopefully, you, you do have this one as an option. 
Uh, all you have to do is double click it. You can double click right on the title, or if you are, are used to doing it the, the what is it, pre-2013 way, I think it is that, that uh, the double click feature was added. You can click on the title and then you just click select. And you can also remember filter for the query field. So let's say there were a time here, I could have right clicked, selected filter by field, and put in NM last act. And maybe I got that field name from that screen layout. So I know exactly what I'm looking for. Then all you do next is enter your values. Uh, what you're seeing here is dates. Of course, if there was something that you had to fill in some kind of text, that would be there as well. If you look to the right, you will see a tiny little calendar button. And if you click on that, you have the, uh, the calendar pop up and you can actually enter the date. Um, one thing when entering dates, you do need the, you, you have to be careful where you are in the uh, sort of in the field you're typing in. You always want to use your tab key so you're at the beginning because otherwise you're going to get a weird like, uh, 02 to, you know, 202 or something, if, if we were looking at a date and it, it, it gets jumbled, it yells at you. So just either type in at the very beginning or take advantage of the calendar feature to just select a date. If this were a query where I was entering some kind of text value, like if I were looking at interest code or, you know, course code or something like that, rather than the calendar button, you're actually going to see a little ellipses button. And we will get to that as an example later, but just know that it's the same idea. You click on it and you'll actually get a list of the values that are already in the system for, for this field. So we ran it, right? Let's say I put in my dates here and the next thing that comes up, again, I'm in mailing labels. I get my report. I get my basic mailing label report. And it's done. I, I did what I was supposed to do, but it's not quite what I wanted, right? It's, it's not at all. And why? Because now I'm getting labels up here with, with no address, right? Or, or I'm getting things that just don't even make sense because this is my demo. I put some sort of enrollment value in a name and, and that's, uh, that's completely wrong. So so what do we do next? All right, so I started really broad and, and, and it, it seemed like a great idea at the time, okay? It seemed like a great idea, but it went a little wrong. So how can we make it now? We started broad, but how can we make that more specific? How can we tailor that, pare it down to really get what, we're, what we need, right? We started, we had our names without registration. That was good. We did a last activity, so we got you know, any name, whether it was updated or had a, 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 a registration, right? We, we had a year range, but we noticed that there were empty addresses. We don't want those. And if you have youth programs, you may end up pulling records of children. Uh, true story, way back when I was working at Southern Methodist University and I, I was asked to pull addresses for catalogs, uh, I didn't think about this, <laughs> and um, the assistant dean's child got a catalog in the mail, and, and there was, um, there was it, it was a great learning experience. So, so learn from my mistakes, and make sure that we are, are doing things to avoid this, right? So we don't want those, we don't want those at all. So how, how do we set up our query to give us what we need? In this case, and let me go into student manager. So I can show you, we'll do a little bit of bouncing around here. So I'm at my mailing labels. Again, I talked about, you know, you could exclude don't mail names. That's the thing, frankly, that you just want to leave checked. Unless you really want to mail them stuff and, and hear from them about why they didn't want something from you. Um, Recording the CRM entry, always a good idea because then there's something on their record that says, hey, I sent this to you. And then if you wanted to use, you know, include waitlisted or canceled or inactive, you would do that there. So back to my list. Um, so now we're thinking, all right, I do want last activity. And I do have that as an option here. 
but do I have anything that also looks at, I don't know, address, right? Address is an empty. Um, I've got a bunch on here. I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to scroll through. I could type in address, right? There's nothing there. Right clicking again brings me back to the list. Um, I'm not seeing anything at first glance that talks about a, a birth date, right? So we want to send things to only adults, so we're assuming that's 18 and up, whatever. But I, I don't see anything here for that either. So what do we do? We're going to craft one. We're going to craft our quality query. So now we'll actually go through the steps to set one up. Just a few important do's and don'ts, right? Include what you need. We'll talk about the don't fill in values. We'll actually walk through that example. Give it a clear title. The, the best thing you can do for yourself when you have to come back and run this again in six months and you completely forgot, or you know, for the next person who comes along, is to have a title that makes sense, right? You can copy queries. You, you could, but I'm going to say don't here. Don't modify an existing one. Remember, because it, it already exists, if you edit that, and put it and, and, and suit it to, to your needs, the next person coming through who was used to running that one is now going to end up choosing something that has been changed, right? Because once you modify it, it's permanent. Questions or are we good? You're good. All right. This all must be very clear or just complete old hats and, and we're all pros at it. <laughs> How do we craft a quality query? The very first thing we do is we just click the add button. That's the first place to start. We're crafting it, we're adding it. Very next thing you have to do is give it a title. Like I said before, you want it to be, you want it to be specific. You really want to say, here's what this query does. And so what did we, want to include. We still like that last student activity date greater than equal to a date. That's, that's good. That's a keeper. We want to make sure we're getting folks who actually have an address. Right? So we want to include something about the address not being an empty field. And we want to make sure it's not going to kids. So in this example, we're going to set a birth date parameter, right? Now you could, you could have set all of those kids' name records to do not mail, right? And then excluded them. But in our example, we're going to do this because it's fun to add this many options to the query. Okay. So once we click add, we have to enter a title. Again, like I said, we want it to be specific. You only get a certain number of characters. If you can do this in less characters than I have, do it. But we want it to be clear, right? So last student activity, greater than or equal. Address is not empty and birth date is greater than or equal. All of that fits. To me, that's clear. So again, you want it to be clear, you want it to be meaningful. When you look at this, you know what it's gonna do. Once we give it a title, we get to this lovely screen. So we can add our field. I'm gonna carry the, the title across the next few slides so you can kind of see where we are with that. After clicking the Add button on this screen, you get this lovely list of all of your field options. It's a rather large list, which is a nice thing. And we'll uh, see, example, I know I'm not putting in the title I said I was gonna put in, but you saw it in the slide, so we're gonna be okay. So in this field, and you can, I thought you could click and drag it over, but any available query fields, because just like um, reporting areas, right, there are some things that you can report on in courses, but maybe there are things that you can't. It's the same way with a query, right? There are fields available. There are some that might not be. We will talk about missing items next time, but know that that is, that is a fun little button we can use. But so when we're creating one, any of your options are here, all you have to do is double click it. So we were looking at last student activity, we could come in here. It is in alphabetical order, which is very nice. And notice you do also have some tool tips, right? If you just hover over, you will get directions in student manager. 
you can search by typing a little bit of it, right click to see things, it's pretty fantastic. So once we find it, we double click. Then we get our operator. Our last student activity. This, so we've, we've chosen the last student activity. And then we talked about it being greater than or equal to, right? Greater than or equal to some kind of date. So all we do there is we also double click. Now, you could use greater than date. Um, I find that this is just simpler because we're looking at exactly the last five years, right? Or we can start one, one, 17 and it's going to include that. So you don't have to think about like, oh, I need it to be greater than 1231.16. This to me is just a little, a little more straightforward. Now, when we get to this screen, you have double clicked, you have chosen your operator. When you are crafting a quality query, after choosing an operator, you are given the option to fill in a value. 9.8 times out of 10, leave it empty and select ask later. If we were creating this right now, we're, we're building our query and we know that ultimately we're going to be looking, you know, we're gonna pull last activity within three years. And so we would be starting, let's say January of 17. If I were to enter that date right now, it's, it is now part of the query. It is going to do the same thing every time this query is run, and it is always going to look at 17. So I could not run this query later if I wanted to expand that activity range, right? I couldn't run it later if I wanted to narrow it. I couldn't run it three years from now because it's, and, and also, look for just three years of activity because it's still gonna be looking at 17. So when you get to this screen, all you have to do is click ask later. Ask later, that's it. So that way anytime you run it, you can fill in those values. Once you've done that, it's going to ask, are you finished creating this condition? Okay, yes, in fact I am, thank you for asking. So it's on there now. Like I said, ask later. Questions are specific, values are broad, okay? Once we click okay, that's it. We've put in the first condition. And with our example, we're gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep putting the rest of them in. How do we do that? We go back to add. And, okay, so you have options here. For some queries, you might want um, last activity is greater than or equal to or, um, <clears throat> I don't know, update date is greater than or equal to, or last activity and interest, or interest code. I mean, there are, there are things you can do here. For our example, we are using and. And what did we say was next? Address is not an empty field. Now, you've got some options here. If we look over here, we have an address, <clears throat> excuse me, for firm or for name. Now, my title just said address is not an empty field, right? Typically, when we are creating name records, either online or you're doing it, <clears throat> excuse me, in student manager in the office, that line one is always what we're putting information in, right? There, we're probably not skipping that address line one through here and going straight to two. So I say that's the only one you need to select. So you could have in your query title put address line one is not an empty field. I'm going to use that. It's still going to say address is not an empty field. Now, notice with this one, Right before when we were looking at the date, we had things like greater than or equal to, less than, is not an empty field. Uh, when we start talking about address or uh, if we were querying on course code for something, you do get different operators, right? So begins with or matches or, uh, let's see what else is in here, um, is within a list. That's one of my favorites for, for other queries. But in this case, we want address 
is not an empty field. It's down at the bottom. So we'll select that one. Now, notice that this, you're, you're not going to be prompted after that, right? There's, there's nothing to, to really enter there, right? You're not entering a value. You're not entering dates. It's just, I want it to not be an empty field. So we say, okay. All right. So now we have two items in here. And that final one is birth date is greater than or equal to. So I add again. And I put and again, right? Because we want it to match all three of these. So, oh, where is it? Uh, it might not actually be in here. And so you may get to see. Oh, no, never mind. It is. It's in alphabetical order. If you uh, know that B comes after A and you don't scroll past it. So, birthday. Is, again, you could use between two dates or you could use, I don't know, less than, you wouldn't want to do that. So we're just going to use, again, greater than or equal to, right? So we can, we can do the math. We can count back what would, what would 18 be, uh, 2002, but that's okay because we're not going to enter the date yet, right? We don't want to do that because we want to be able to run this query next year and still have it go back to 18. Rather, it would end up being 17 years back, right? So ask later. Finished? Yes. So now we have everything in here. We have our query. It is, it is crafted, and I say that it's quality. And just so I am uh, showing good examples here, I named it example, but I'm going to use my rename button. Right, so I can see the old title, and then I can enter the new one, the one that's actually accurate. Whoops, hang on. So last foresight. Close that. Eh. Can't do this while people are looking over my shoulder. And address empty and first date greater than or equal to. Great. So also, that's how you rename a query. That's pretty straightforward, right? We click on it, we hit rename. And now it's time to run. So I'm going to select it. And then we can look at our last activity again, right? So, oh, let's say one, one. Um, I was talking about three years. Depending on how you're sending catalogs, which population of folks you want to keep, you may be using a five-year range. You may be using a one-year range. That's why we leave the query empty, right? The value empty so we can come in here and put something in later. 2017, good. Notice we did have three pieces in that query, right? We also had that address line one is not empty. But because all that is is not an empty field, we weren't prompted to enter anything or given the option to ask later. It's just going to do that. It's going to do that, and we don't have to worry about it. And birthday is greater than or equal to 01102. Now, you can type part of the date here, and once you tab out, it's going to fix it for you. And look at that. No records were found. So why is that? This will happen. This will happen when you set queries up. And sometimes we think, but it worked earlier and it didn't work now. So while I'm thinking through this, are there, are there any questions yet or are we all just still plugging along? I think they're all following along and being very thorough. <laughs> all right. So, ah, so. This is a time when we can go way back to our our middle school and high school math classes where we learned order of operations, right? And we can throw in a little bit of a logic class in here. So I use last activity and address is not an empty field and birth date is greater than or equal to, right? So in order for this to run, 
you would have to have something in the birth date field, I think is what we're running into here. So let me go in here and see what I've got. Okay, no, I do have a birthday in there. So it should have hold. All right. So this is a great opportunity to reevaluate the query that we chose to use. So what if I try to figure that one out, and I swear it worked for us earlier, or for me earlier, and let's look at another example. How about that? I think that sounds fantastic. So I'm going to bail on mailing labels. The, one of the other questions in the, uh, in the PowerPoint was, what was the most popular subject, right? And I said, maybe we should be over in the stats area for that. We might want to look at courses and course data summary. And if we go back to my question, I think it was, what, 2018? So added bonus, learning more about the stats area, in case you're not using that. The statistical reporting area gives you subject code already, so I want to know which subject code was most popular. But I also want to know about the year. I'm looking for a specific year. Another cool thing about this reporting area is you can look at all subject codes, all of them, all the entries are here. Or maybe you just want to compare a few, like business, I could double click, and crafts, and you could see which one did better. In this situation, I'm just going to throw them all in here. So let me actually do that in case it gives me grief. Okay, so again, on the report options screen, you are given a, a few more choices here. Uh, for this, we're going to use summary only. And notice right now, include canceled records is checked. So that's going to include canceled courses. So it might seem like it was the most popular if you had a bunch of canceled ones, but in fact, it wouldn't. So I do want to uncheck that. And I'm going to click OK. So again, we're back to our query list manager. So I have just a few in here. Got things like course number begins, number begins with, and canceled is true. A range of starting dates, so you might use that for 2018. Um, course number in LPN class, that's a great example of something specific. Because what I did was I edited that. I clicked on it and I selected edit. This is an example where I've actually put in something specific in my query so that it always looks for course numbers that contain L. So if I click edit, I can actually select that one. You can change your operators. You can change the fields that you're using by using this, by clicking that edit button. It's going to tell you what you were doing, right? If you need to back up to edit something, you can just keep hitting that escape key. So notice that it's course number contains. I had L entered in there. So this is where I did not select ask later for this specific query. All this is to say, there are some times that you would want to include specific values. I'm gonna cancel, I'm just gonna bail out of all of it though, because I don't wanna mess with anything. So my favorite query when we're looking at courses, the first thing I'm going to go to is just the course number begins. Because if you're coding your courses the way ASWARE recommends, all of your 2018, right, in this example it was 2018, all of them are going to begin with 18. So you don't have to worry about putting in dates, and you don't have to worry about trying to enter every single course code from 18. I mean, that's just, that becomes overwhelming and you don't have you would have to add so many query parameters of there's there's a course number is in a list option that lets you enter or there's a, just I, I should say the operator there is an in in a list operator that you can enter 12 values in but if you offered 200 courses you would have to keep building that query and things will just go terribly wrong so when you're looking for course information, I suggest always starting with course number begins. That's always, to me, your best choice. So you can also see here, 
it was last run just a few weeks ago. It is the one that I've run the most. If I wanted to look for a different one, I could, again, if I click on the uh, top of it, it should sort it. Sometimes when you click something over here and come back, it, it won't do that for you. That's what's happening here. But I select course number begin. And again, it's just enter what it begins with. That's it. Because I set up that query, we'll even look at it. Course number begins with. Edit, move this back all the way up. You can see where we started to build a course number begins with. At the very beginning, course number. Then you get your operators, just like when we were building the other query. So it just begins with or matches. That's it. Double click. I don't want to do anything right now, so ask later. Finished? Yep, done. When I select this, I did mention earlier with entering dates when, when creating that query that there was a little calendar button, right? You'll notice here there's a little ellipses button. It's a great button. When you click it, it loads all of your courses. Now, understand, if you have been a, a loyal, faithful student manager user for 20 years, it's going to take some time to populate. It should be just your active courses. I don't think I have anything archived. Could be wrong on that. I can verify it for you. But let's say we were looking for just a certain course to begin with. You could use that here. In my case, I just want 18, so I'm just going to type up here 18 and OK. It ran. I selected the default report, so it just loaded for me. So now we can see all of our courses beginning with the, the number 18, all of our course codes beginning with 18. So all of our courses, right, that we offered in 18, and we can see all of our subject codes. It's a fun report to look at. You can see how many you offered, how many were canceled, who enrolled, how much money. If you're using Pocket Ledger, then you would also see your expenses and your net. So that's a, a, a good question. It's a, 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 an easy question to answer when, the, uh, when the, the boss starts asking you, well, what, what was popular before? You know, while we start planning these new classes, what did we have before? Any questions yet? We don't have a question, but the audience has some advice for you on that query you were developing for the catalog oh, yeah, of the address. Right. They say try less than or equal to 2002 instead of greater than and see if that fixes oh, your problem. Oh, that is exactly <laughs> what the problem was. That Mark is 100% what it was. <laughs> I uh, thank you for that advice. That is absolutely um, what the problem was. Give me one second, and we will uh, we'll try it that way. <laughs> Drum roll. Whoever came up Whoever with that came up one, with that you one. are you are <laughs> the expert here. Okay, so uh, we are at mailing labels, Control M. I'm gonna exclude don't mail names now because I want to do that. Now I'll say okay. Ha! Ah, let's see. All right, there's the query that we started. Edit. Yeah, you you sure are right about that. That is exactly um, okay. So wait, hold on. I had greater than. We want less than, right? You are correct. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's try it now. So we want seventeen. Uh, Oh, hey, there it is. There right. you go. Thank you for that. Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely done. Yay. I hear clapping in the background. Is that uh, Chuck over there? All right, so that's that's it. And then, again, we had the – I checked the log CRM entry, so I could put in here exactly what it was. I'm going to skip that, though. So there's that one. I showed you looking at sort of a, a course code in the list using the stats area. Um, are there any questions? Somebody want to give an example? I know we're going to do that next time, but if we've got some basic ones, or maybe if you want to share your favorite simple query. I'm not seeing anything. They're processing all of this, Lindsay. 
But it is folks a lot on the other end of the line, if you think of something, drop me a line and I'll send it to Lindsay so she can do a demo next session for that. Yeah, definitely. The uh, the one thing, Lindsay, this Chuck, I'm I'm hopping in here. Good job. Uh, the one thing I would, um, if you'd want to jump back to adding a query element, just jump quickly. Uh, you you covered over the alphabetizing of the codes, but I wanted to add a caveat. So go ahead and just jump into any query here. Um, query. Okay. Now pick one and do edit, and then hit add. We just want to get to the query select area. Edit, edit that, edit, and add an element, like add. Mm -hmm. and do an and. Okay, this is where we're at. As Lindsay said, they are alphabetized. The one thing I do want to do want to note is that these labels are humanly assigned to a field. And you noted Lindsay was looking for birthday. Uh, sometimes the person entering the field puts the name of the table next to it. So it'd be student birthday or name birthday. And other times you might just have the word birthday. So again, you do need to kind of do some checking through there to see if that word appears um, with the field name in front of it or somebody has used a different um, somebody have used a different label than you might think. So you might just need to do a little bit of searching yet before you hit the mad add missing item, which will be, I think, next month's topic, right, Lindsay? Yes, yes. Yep, all right, that, that's all I just wanted to kind of remind people is that the, these labels um, are humanly assigned and humans have gen different ways that they might choose to label a, a field um, in that you might show real quickly here though how when you hover over a field and right mouse click, it will actually or you is it double click? Uh -huh. You right it act click. yeah, right click. <clears throat> That's a nice little trick. You might want to review that again for them, Lindsay. Oh yeah. Um you know, I don't know that I've ever I'm learning all kinds of things today. So <laughs> what Chuck is talking about, if we look at a field, so let's say I'm looking at name ID, if I right click on that it's going to give me the table name and the actual field name. So names, all right, so I know this is coming from the names table and the actual you know, proper field name is NMID. That, that is a great useful thing to... Uh, well, uh, use the firm, uh, look for the word firm, just type F for firm. Okay, you got firm name and, and if you look there, it's actually twice. Uh, firm name. Now, if you right mouse, mouse click on, or if you right mouse click on one, well, I take that back. But there is a firm name in the firm table and a firm name in the names table. So again, typically I would recommend using the names firm reference. So when you see firm name, you want to make sure are you looking at the firm from the firms or the firm from the names. And so that's a little nuance again that can sometimes trick you up, so. Yeah. Very good. All right, and cool. And one thing I I, I will say that I, I noticed scrolling through here, if you, um, this is a neat little thing, if you're using the user defined fields, your friendly name that, that you're labeling them is what you're gonna see. And you will notice, in fact, that that is not in alphabetical order. So what I'm talking about is, uh, my name record, right, additional info is where our user defined fields are. You will notice that my third, fourth, and fifth are named just three, four, and five. Contact is the first one. So that's why you're seeing in the, uh, the field selector over on the left right now, those, those, uh, those names. Yeah. Anyone else? Helpful hints, questions? You know, we've got like 10 more minutes, folks. No? I'm not seeing questions, but I am seeing a lot of accolades and thank yous, Lindsay. You did a, an excellent job, very, very thorough. We thank appreciate you. that. Yeah. So you'll want to be sure, everyone, that if you've signed up for today's, you are also signed up for next week's. Uh, next week, next month, which will feel like <laughs> next week probably, on the 25th, you're already registered. No uh, reason to register again. Um, so we hope to see you there for that. And remember, too, that we are open for conference registration. 
get your registration in. Contact me if you have questions about your scholarship. And those out there that are from Ohio, Chuck's going to be in that area on the 9th, and we have a training there. So if you haven't heard about that and are interested in information, drop me a line, and we can get you signed up for that. Anything else for the good of the cause, Lindsay, Chuck? If not, we will let these fine folks get back to their daily activity, and we will see them again next month for the second part of this session. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Good. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.